Hi, and welcome to episode 22 of Understanding Dark Table. In this episode, we're going to look at not one, but two modules, color reconstruction and highlight reconstruction. As the names suggest, they do different things, but similar things. So let's jump right on in. I've got four images here that have been problematic for various reasons from different shoots, and we'll have a look at what these two modules can do to try and fix these problems. This is a shoot I did with Charlotte in my garage of all places uh, a couple of years ago, and this was when I'd first bought my studio lights. And I'd never shot with studio lighting before, and I was just having a bit of a play around getting used to them. And this was oh, one of the first four or five shots of the day. And as you can see, we've blown highlights here on her forehead, on her cheek, and on her nose. So let's have a look at color reconstruction. Just quickly running through the parameters. We've got threshold. That basically says, which values do you want me to attempt color reconstruction on? So when it's set at 100%, no pixels are going to be corrected. If we set it to, say, 95%, then it means the 5% of the brightest pixels, or all of those pixels which are in the brightest 5% of the range, or the, you know, the 5% the on the right hand side of the histogram, those are the pixels upon which color reconstruction will be attempted. The spatial extent refers to in XY coordinates, how far and wide should I look to find replacement colors? So it's basically going to be dependent on the resolution of the image you're currently working on. If this was shot on, say, a 12 megapixel camera, you would probably set a spatial extent of, you know, 50 to 100 pixels. But if you shot this on a, you know, 100 megapixel phase one digital back, then you'd probably set it to, you know, or leave it at the 400 pixels, which is the default value. So it's all about how far and wide should the algorithm go looking to find colors to replace the problem areas. Then we've got the range extent. Now the range refers to the variation in luminosity of potential replacement pixels. So when the spatial extent goes out, in this case 400 pixels, to look for other colors that it could use to replace the blown sections, the range extent says, how much variation in luminosity are we going to accept in those potential replacement pixels? So if you set the range extent higher, it means that the pixels which can be considered for color replacement of our blown pixels can have a greater variation in luminance. As we set that range extent to lower values, we're being more picky about which pixels we'll tolerate for replacement. So generally you'll want to start with lower values and then inch your way up as you feel the need. Now I've set this to 95% and as we can see Charlotte's face has kind of got this weird grayish magenta-ish tone and the reason for that is because the spatial extent is too high. 400 pixels means it's going 200 pixels in either direction and that means it's come out here into the mottled backdrop and it's grabbing some of those pixels and using that for color replacement. So if we drop this down to say 50 pixels, suddenly the color is not so offensive. I mean it, it's still a bit yellowish but it's a little bit closer to the skin tone than what we were getting before and maybe I could drop that even further. Let's drop it down to 20. I've just been having a bit of a, a tweak with those values and I've raised the spatial extent back up to 50 pixels and the range extent back up to 5. Now the manual does stress that you shouldn't use the color reconstruction module when you are zoomed in on the image. It apparently is a little bit of a, I don't know if you'd call it a bug, call it an undocumented feature but it sometimes skews the colors a little bit when it's zoomed in. 
but the manual does stress not to worry about that it is only in the display it's not the way the image will render but they do recommend that you are zoomed out when using the color reconstruction module so let's just jump back out to the full view let's try toggling the module off and back on to be honest with this softbox up here i'm not actually seeing a whole lot of difference at the zoomed out full view but when zoomed in i certainly can see a difference next up we'll have a look at precedence it defaults to none and the first option is saturated colors and as the name suggests what it means is when it goes looking for pixels to use for color targeting if you like it will give precedence to those pixels which are more saturated rather than pixels which are less saturated the next option is hue and this will allow us to specify an actual color from the color bar here of pixels to look for now i find it strange that this module which has this option to you know let you choose a color doesn't feature a color picker you know how some of the modules they have the little color picker up in the top right hand corner i'm kind of surprised that there isn't one for this module obviously skin tones they're sort of in this you know yellowish range so you would probably come down here somewhere into the yellows and oranges to be honest i'm not seeing a whole lot of difference there but just be aware that the option is there if you want to specify a color i guess if the image you were working on specifically had areas that spatially were quite close but in terms of hue were quite different then it might be you know quite an advantage to use the hue mode so that you could say no i only want you to choose from th these colors here don't choose these other colors which spatially are close by but are not relevant to the area i'm trying to fix okay let's just move on to this next image which was from the same shoot and a little bit later but again we can see a bit of a specular highlight there on charlotte's forehead so let's try obviously i've been mucking around with this before we'll just collapse that history stack let's try some color reconstruction and see what happens so i'm going to drop that spatial extent back because i don't think it needs to be that high let's drop this down i'm actually not seeing really any improvement there whatsoever Let's try switching this to hue and tell it, yes, we want that sort of skin tone. Toggle off. Yeah, it's doing a little bit there. Maybe I need to bring the threshold down even more. Yeah, it kind of works. Let's jump to the third image. Okay, so this was from a Little Red Riding Hood themed shoot that I did a couple of years ago. And again, little bit of blown highlights on the cheek here. This was the lovely Aima. You might remember Aima from the film noir shoot. Can't remember what episode that was in, but I used one of her images. It's her in lingerie standing against a wall. I'm sure you remember it. Anyway, so color reconstruction. Let's give this a go, see what it does. Let's drop that spatial extent right down again, because I don't think we need to go too far and wide. And just drop this down a bit yeah it's it's tried to go for the yellows but i think it's picking up a lot of the color from her hair uh, let's just try going to hue and let's just sort of aim for those skin tones yeah look it's not blowing me away i, I suppose it's it's helping a little bit but i think the um the exposure is the problem so with that in mind let's move on to the highlight reconstruction module because that might actually just be a better approach so let's jump back to the first image let's undo our color reconstruction and go to the highlight reconstruction now interestingly i got all the way to the tail end of the section of the user manual on highlight reconstruction before it dropped the little nugget that the highlight reconstruction works best 
if you dial in a little bit of negative exposure before you start working with the highlight reconstruction module. So that was handy information to discover. So we'll go to the exposure module and let's just dial in three quarters of a stop under and go to highlight reconstruction. And we've got a couple of different methods here. Clip highlights, reconstruct in LCH, which is the color space where L is lightness, C is chroma or saturation, and H is the hue or the color, and reconstruct color. We'll start with the clip highlights method. Now, according to the manual, the clip highlights will clip all three channels to the same value, which means that any blown highlight areas like this tend to end up that sort of wishy-washy gray. So let's try dropping the clipping threshold and see what happens. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty yuck. I think we'll just move on to reconstruct in LCH. So reset. So what this method will do is analyze the non-clipped channels within a particular block of pixels from the sensor and try and determine the values that would make most sense for that channel which is clipped. Now obviously if all three channels are clipped then you've got a problem and I think in some of these pixels we probably have but let's give it a go and see what happens. Now the manual does say that reconstructing LCH will tend to make reconstructed pixels monochrome which obviously is not what we want. So let's move on to the third option. Reset, go reconstruct color and drop our threshold. That's actually done a much better job. Not perfect, but it's better. What this method is doing is looking at the surrounding pixels which are not clipped and pulling the color information from there. So in a sense, it's very similar to the color reconstruction module. I guess the difference is that with the color reconstruction module, you can actually specify that threshold to say, only look at this number of clipped pixels or look at this number of clipped pixels or you know whatever range you want to specify. So let's just have a look at how this might work on these other two images. So undo our color reconstruction. Let's go with a little bit of negative exposure here and then go to highlight reconstruction. Let's go straight to reconstruct color. And in this particular image, I'm actually not seeing a whole lot of highlight reconstruction happening. I actually think the color reconstruction module did a better job for this particular image. Let's jump over to Little Red Riding Hood and see what happens with Aima. So again, we'll undo our color reconstruction and we'll go with reconstruct color. And again, I'm really not seeing a whole lot of improvement with the highlight reconstruction module. I actually think the color reconstruction module worked better. And if we jump over to this last image, which I chose specifically for the highlight reconstruction module. This was a, an image in a little village in France, as you could have guessed from the flag, uh, from our Europe holiday in 2017. And as we can see, there's a bit of clipping here in the clouds. So if we come down here to the highlight reconstruction, we'll leave it on clip highlights and see what happens. Ooh, yuck, don't like that, reset. Let's try reconstructing LCH. Nope, that's actually made it worse. Reset, let's try reconstruct color. And I know from having practiced it that if I go to about 0.95, this will actually do quite a nice job up here in the brightest part of the clouds. If I toggle the module off, and then toggle it back on, you can see that what it's done is brought some of these cyan tones into that overexposed part of the cloud. 
Now, you might look at it and go, yeah, but it doesn't look 100% right. I honestly think in the context of this entire image, it would never grab anybody's attention. And to me, it does actually look better with those cyan tones in there rather than just pure white, each to their own. I think the thing to understand about both of these modules is they are not going to fix really horrendous mistakes. But in the odd example where you've got just a little bit of a, you know, a highlight on somebody's skin from, you know, maybe just a little bit too much flash or the flash was too close, they can go a long way to helping recover some of that information. Like I said, it's not going to be a panacea for every ill that befalls you, but it might just do the trick. All right, before we go, I promised you a couple of episodes ago that when the canvas arrived, I would show you. So, walk this way. Well, it's Saturday morning, and guess what just arrived? That is the canvas. Let's have a look. So there you go, that's the canvas. Uh, for that little video, I just hung it in the living room, uh, but it's now actually hanging in our bedroom and I really like it. So James, once again, thank you so much for your post work on the raw file, mate. Much appreciated, you, you really did it justice. All right, that will do it for this one. I'll uh, catch you in the next one.